Well, the question comes up often as to whether or not we can actually measure human emotion. What scientists are now documenting uh, is the effect of emotions upon the heart field. The human heart is now documented as the strongest generator of both electrical and magnetic fields in the body. Now this is important because we've always been taught that the brain is where the action is. The brain has an electrical field, it does have a magnetic field, but they're relatively weak compared to the heart. The heart is about 100 times stronger electrically and up to 5,000 times stronger, 5,000 times stronger magnetically than the brain. And the reason this is important is because the physical world as we know it is made of those two fields of energy, electrical and magnetic fields of energy, electromagnetic fields. Our own physics books now tell us if we can change either the magnetic field of an atom or the electrical field of the atom, by doing that we change, we literally change that atom, we change the stuff that our bodies in this world are made of. And it appears now that the human heart is designed to do both, to change both the electrical field and the magnetic field of our bodies and our world, and they do so in response to the emotions that we create uh, between our heart and our brain. Well, I've had many questions uh, from people asking me how these discoveries relate to what is now known as the Law of Attraction. At a very high level, in broad brushstrokes, they may give us insight into the relationships. But when we get deep, deep, deep into the findings, as well as the ancient teachings, what we find is this. It's less about attraction and more about a mirroring. And here's what I mean by that. The world around us, our own science now is telling us there's a field of energy that underlies all physical reality and it, it is known now by names that range from simply the field. Uh, Lynn McTaggart wrote a beautiful book entitled The Field about this, this quantum essence. Some people call it nature's mind, some scientists call it the mind of God, some call it the matrix, some call it the divine matrix. In 1944, the father of quantum theory, Max Planck, identified this field and he called it the matrix. That's where this term came from. And what we're now beginning to understand is that when we create the feelings of what we choose to experience in our lives, everything from uh, conscious choices of uh, the perfect relationship or abundance in our lives or the healing in our bodies or the healing in the bodies of our loved ones, that those feelings are creating the patterns of magnetic and electrical field in our hearts that are literally rearranging the stuff of this quantum soup, this quantum essence, allowing the pattern of what we have claimed in our hearts to become manifest in the world around us. So it's less about attracting uh, from a scientific perspective and more about consciously creating the template within us, knowing that the stuff of the universe will congeal around that template in the world around us to simply mirror reflect what we've claimed. In other words, a very simple way of looking at this, and we've all heard this before, is that we must become in our lives the very things that we choose to experience in our world. Now science is giving us a very good reason to understand why that is.